So I think uh, the first thing, first and foremost thing I want to highlight is we are neurologists first and then serologists or antibody testing people later. So a lot of our approach for diagnostics and serological assessments are um, initially primed by our clinical uh, evaluation and our examination. So giving an example of um, neuropathies, what I tend to do is uh, initially assess the patient, fi firstly figure out is it a nerve problem, is it a muscle problem, is it a neuromuscular junction problem, the best I can clinically. Subsequently, mo in most of these patients, the most helpful test is EMG um, and nerve conduction studies. There are exceptions where, for example, small fiber neuropathies or something called a sensory polyradiculopathy, um, where EMG is not the only test required and there are additional investigations required, but EMG nerve conduction studies provide us a very helpful information um, in sort of diagnosing these patients and then telling us what additional tests need to be ordered. Based on clinical and electrodiagnostic assessment, um, we tend to subcategorize, so I'm talking specifically about neuropathies, uh, into the, these neuropathies into different phenotypes. So some patients have sensory ganglionopathy who have asymmetric onset of numbness, uh, tingling, pain, affecting uh, upper extremities and progressing on to lower extremities. When we see that particular phenotype, we think of some certain subset of antibodies, many of them which are paraneoplastic. Others have a condition called as polyradicular neuropathy affecting the lower extremity more predominantly uh, with very uh, peculiar electrodiagnostic features and those presentations make us think of another subset of antibodies. And then there's small fiber neuropathy antibodies, which are somewhat different. So initial clinical categorization helps us understand what antibody evaluations are helpful. And then it also helps us in scenarios where you send these antibody panels and they come back negative. If you have a high clinical suspicion, based on your initial workup, that negative panel does not necessarily dissuade you from using immunotherapy. So that's why the initial assessment and categorization is crucial before going on to serological assessment or additional antibody testing. And based on putting all these results together, when we see the patient back to discuss the results, that's when I usually discuss various immunotherapy regimens which I'm going to utilize. Some, some of that is helped by some of the antibody results because different antibodies we have slightly different strategies for. Um, and then um, usually we start like with first line therapies and in certain cases also go into second line therapies such as rituximab, mycophenolate, things along those lines. Uh, for myopathies and for neuromuscular junction disorders or dysautonomias, our uh, approach, approach is similarly vary, but the focus continues to be clinical assessment.